Hi there, my name's Vince, I'm a composer. Welcome to the channel. Um, I just wanted to do a short talky piece about the topic of composing, because that's my thing, I write music for a living. Um, specifically from the point of view of how I think about composing, how I think about teaching other people to compose. Um, it's something that I'm just starting to get into a little bit more, particularly via this channel. I've been trying to think quite deeply about what approach I might take to try to introduce people to writing their own music and expressing themselves through composition. And I was reflecting a lot on how I personally have learned to compose, how I tend to think about it. And the phrase that came to mind was composing through improvisation. Because if you're familiar with some of the other videos on this channel, you'll have seen that I really enjoy playing the piano and kind of just noodling and coming up with ideas and just getting completely lost in harmony and chords and movements and patterns and just sort of, you know, it's one of my favourite things to do, especially on like a Sunday morning, is just sit for hours at the piano and just kind of do a lot of world building, a lot of just exploratory playing, find something, go, oh, that's quite nice and kind of stay with it for a while. Sometimes it's more focused, sometimes it's more... Um, loose um, and so yeah I'm a big fan of noodling and I was thinking about how I've sort of always done that from my earliest musical memories um, I have really strong memories of just sitting on my dad's lap as a, probably about sort of five or six years old just you know plinking plonking away um, but yeah we would have these really nice long extended jams where he would just maybe just go boom 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 on the low end of the keyboard and then I would try and come up with something that complemented that and then he would move and I would move to something else and those kinds of jam sessions and noodling sessions whether solo or collaborative have just been a huge part of my music making journey and I think at some level it's like kind of the core of how I approach writing music. It's a bit like learning a language where you have all of this vocabulary and various like stock phrases and maybe metaphors and things that you can access, grammatic constructions and things like that. And then when you're having a conversation, you're not really thinking about uh, anything technical. You're just reaching for whatever tools you have at your disposal to say what you want to say. Um, this is something that first started to come into focus for me you know, in the context of music, perhaps when I was learning jazz piano within that very specific idiom. I studied out in North Carolina for a semester abroad, and that was really formative to my jazz education, just, I think, partly because it's so much more a part of the culture in the States than it is in, in the UK, even in a place like London. Um, there was just some really passionate teachers over there, and that idea of just speaking, just saying what you want to say on your instrument, and that emphasis as well on personal expression. It's not about trying to copycat somebody else's style. It's about, but at the same time, it's not about being original either. It's, it's just about being kind of true to your voice. Um, and that's that really crystallized something for me, that idea of just saying something on the instrument. That's a phrase that kind of came up a lot. And I really think that that puts its finger on something with composition as well. I always feel like my goal is just to say something through my music. So I'm sort of making this video partly to organize my own thoughts and maybe to tease the possibility of some more music education content on this channel from this perspective of composing via improvisation, specifically piano improvisation, just because that's what I know best. Um, and I do think that that's a great starting point, even if you're not primarily a piano player, just because it sort of gives you the ability to play with sounds in real time, to experience harmonic changes in real time. And, and I think play being the key word, it's not as much about practice, although that's important as well. I really think, you know, noodling kind of gets a bit of a bad rep, um, but honestly, I find, you know, that, that posture of just playing and exploring, it doesn't really require any special energy or effort or willpower to stay in that space for me. Maybe it did at the start when I didn't really have much technical chops, uh, but nowadays anyway it's sort of my practice feels a lot more like just playing and improvising. Um, but there are times when I want to practice in a more focused way as well. So I guess what I wanted to lay out here is these three sort of um, stages or categories of things that I do um, related to composing as a way of maybe trying to summarize a bit where I feel I've landed in terms of my 
philosophical approach to composing and the sort of framework that might underlie any teaching that I do going forward. Um, this is a first draft, so you know, bear with me, I'm just still organizing my thoughts. But um, the first category of things is basically input, or um, you might say it's it's this category of things that has more to do with practice, you know, practice in the big sense of the word, like people talk about having a practice, like an artist's practice or a spiritual practice, um, kind of like a craft or something that you're dedicated to as a student, um, a practice. Um, and I think for me, that includes, um, and has included in the past, things like learning theoretical concepts, you know, music theory concepts, um, things like learning scales and arpeggios, just kind of practicing those really uh, methodically and sort of navigating the keyboard in my case, um, learning existing songs, uh, whether it's classical songs, which is where I sort of started, just learning these set pieces for exams and competitions and things like that. Um, but also anytime you hear a piece of music that excites you to go and get it and at least try to engage with it a little bit. Um, it also includes analytical modes where you're uh, either listening to a piece of music and thinking about it quite analytically, especially when it comes to arrangement and orchestration. You're not just letting the music wash over you, but in the case of, say, an orchestral piece of music, you're really paying attention to like what instruments are playing at a given time and how does that then contrast with what comes after it. And what is it about that particular moment that I might play over and over again on the track? You know, what is it about that which just really surprises me or really delights me? And not so much trying to like pin it down, but just to make a lot of conscious observations about how that's working. I consider that a form of practice as well. Um, then you also have things like learning gear. So for example, you know, as a composer working in the modern day, working on commercial projects, I'm expected to turn around tracks in a certain way. Um, and sometimes that's more organic and just about getting players in a room. Sometimes it's more about manipulating synths and samples. If you're more of a notational person, it's about just kind of getting those chops up as much as you can. And of course, all of these things are just an ongoing process. All of these things, um, to do with practice, I think, have to do with a process of internalizing technical knowledge. Um, and hopefully, you know, this is all in service of things that you find beautiful, you know. So pretty much all uh, Western music is made up of harmony and, you know, scales and arpeggios are kind of like some of the building blocks there. I'm practicing that because I'm sort of drawn to the idea of being able to create more music like that. If I wasn't particularly into the sound of Western tonality and music, you know, like pop songs or like classical music or film music, you know, then it maybe wouldn't make as much sense. I might be better off studying a different kind of tradition, a different type of non-Western scale, for example. Um, but uh, yeah, I think choosing what to practice, especially when it comes to choosing songs that you want to learn, I do think should be led by what you yourself particularly find beautiful. So that's the kind of slight caveat. But I think then at the same time, when you're just starting out, it's just a good idea to take whatever your teacher gives you. So then the second category of things, if the first one is sort of practice or if you like input, um, technical input, the second category is something like getting it in your bones. Um, I sometimes think of this as applied theory. Um, it's sort of where you have this technical thing, this this idea or this scale or this um, chord voicing or this, you know, chord relationship that you feel like you have some technical grasp of and you can execute it on the instrument. Um, but then it's about going the step further and actually playing with it in a more malleable way, finding um, ways to basically incorporate it into improvisation. So um, this would take the form of things like improvisational games where I would, you know, learn a little pattern or a little phrase and then, you know, take a chord progression and just try and shoehorn in the lick or the chord voicing or whatever in a very sort of artificial way, but still a kind of quite spontaneous way trying to do it when I wanted to do it with some level of intention. So improvisational games like that where you start to just understand and sort of dance with the technical knowledge that you've learned um, 
in a way that's a bit more like making music, but still not quite free. You're still creating a structure for yourself. So this is sort of, um, yeah, getting it in your bones. Jam sessions can be very helpful for getting things in your bones from, a, you know, a, still thinking about composing as the end goal. Um, I think any form of improvisation with other people that sort of forces you to continue and forces you to just try and express yourself in some way through the things that you've learned and in a low pressure environment, I guess, would be the, the thing that I'd emphasize. It's not about doing... Um, executing things perfectly it's just about kind of getting your hands dirty and um you know this can be a, a solo thing as well um but yeah sometimes collaborating and jamming with other people can can be a great way especially if you want to do a jam that's a bit more like a practice jam um you know that can be quite a nice sort of hybrid form of practice which is more like music making and it's a bit more fun this sort of category includes things like noodling where um you know you're just allowing yourself to play in a way that maybe isn't that nice for somebody to listen to necessarily, but is fascinating to you in that moment because you're playing with an idea that you've just started to understand. And so there's like something glittering at you that you're like, oh, I love that. I love the sound of when it goes to that kind of chord or whatever. And so you're just like, I'm just going to spend an hour like playing with that and just seeing if I can recontextualize it or just find different ways of varying it, you know, um, maybe, you know, take one lick and then generate sort of 10 or 20 variations of that that kind of have a similar feeling. So this isn't just about um, music theory. This could be about um, noodling around with new gear, you know, noodling around with the new microphone setup that you've just learned about. And so it's not really about producing a great result. It's just about playing. It's just about experimentation and um, you know, seeing if you can find different ways or just sort of generalizing the technical information that you've got a little bit. We mentioned earlier about listening analytically to songs and also learning songs. Um, in this second stage, it feels like now is the time to try and kind of get the spirit of that or the vibe of that and see if you can create something that's new-ish but sort of very much based on that idea. Um, sort of generalizing any anal analytical insights that you've had. So, you know, maybe um, you've transcribed a particular melody and you've noticed how at a certain point, you know, as the pitch goes up, maybe um, it does something cool with the articulations and you like the way that there's contrast there. And so then the general insight might be, well, okay, I can have contrast within my melody or a surprise kind of leap in the pitch or something because I really like the sound of that in this context I wonder if I can take that general idea and sort of and do something similar in my own way so kind of noodling and getting your hands dirty with the material that you've learned in phase one and then the third category of things would be just doing it just composing um, and the reason I sort of make this a distinct category is to very purposefully set it aside and distinguish it from the stuff that has to do with the technical, the stuff that has to do with the improvisational noodly. Um, in this phase, it's more like you've just made a commitment to write a piece of music right now with whatever tools you have, with whatever sort of internalized concept you have. You're just going to speak now. You're just going to, you know, um, try and say something with whatever you have. So. Um, whether that's, you know, very limited in terms of the things that, you know, that you can do, but even the most um, humble materials, you know, loud and soft, uh, short and long, things that are more textural or things that are more melodic, you have things that are fast and slow, you know, there's, there's already so many different possible shades within that. Um, so it's not, not really now about... Um, thinking about, oh, I've, I learned this cool thing, I want to try and jam that in here. Now it's more about, um, actually, you've got this vision at the, at the high level. The first thing is, like, you've decided, I'd like to write a piece like this, and you're able to maybe sum up a kind of an initial visualization or intention in a single phrase. So, you know, that could be, uh, somebody's asked me to write a piece of music for this animation, so... Um, like in a way that kind of takes care of the vision because the correct music is whatever works for that piece. Um, other times if you're writing, you know, more for yourself, it might just be something like, um, I just have this idea of 
a cool chip tune music, you know, an 8 bit video game piece of music that has this particular groove that's like doot da doot 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 da da doot da doot 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 da. Or it might be like, oh, I'd really like to write a warm brass band piece that wouldn't feel out of place in an indie film. Or it might be like, I have this idea for a cool video performance uh, of like a flute player walking down the street in New York and like what would be the thing that they'd play. Maybe it's like, um, I just want to write something that wouldn't sound out of place uh, playing, you know, playing next on a radio playlist after like a Taylor Swift pop banger or something. You know, you just, the idea is you just have this kind of uh, loose idea of, you know, it would be great if this existed. And then, and then it's all about just kind of um, keeping that quite clearly in your mind. And then, as I say, using whatever resources you have to um, find techniques and tools and instrumentation and chords and stuff that feels like it supports that vision. Um, so it's kind of, in a way, it's a three-stage process. It's kind of like a, you have this vision, stage one, then stage two, you're sort of, you're, there's activity, you're kind of notating stuff in some way, whether that's using traditional notation or whether that's using a DAW. Um, and then stage three would be you're then listening back to what you've created or you're hearing it in your head um, if you're just using manuscript paper and you're sort of like checking it against the vision. And it's not so much that you're just simply checking like, like yes or no, does this fit my vision? If yes, continue. If no, don't. It's more like you're, you've got a relationship then between your original vision and the thing that you've created. And you want those two things to sort of to yeah to have a conversation the vision is is sort of like in a way the authority but you want to have some flexibility like there has to be a kind of a two-way flow between your vision and the thing that you've created this is starting to get a little bit abstract but the point is you want to have a little bit of flexibility and fluidity to the vision um while at the same time not going off topic so there's like a spectrum right on the one hand you might kind of go off on one or just get really like into this one little loop that you've created and kind of totally lose focus and lose a sense of perspective. That's one end of the spectrum. And then the other end of the spectrum might be, you know, it technically fits the brief or the, the vision very well, but uh, it's just not interesting enough. There's no surprise. There's no, there's nothing new in there. Um, and so you want to sort of be somewhere between those two ends and, and, you know, like how flexible you are with your vision, how much you're willing to change the original brief in the course of that kind of three stage loop is kind of dependent on the context, dependent on who you're writing for, how long you've got to compose, all those kinds of things. Um, so I would say that's that's the kind of core of it. And as I say, this is a very distinct process to the technical side, which obviously is happening. But for me, it's like that isn't the time when I'm supposed to be thinking about how do I do this or that with my DAW or my notation software. I don't want to be thinking about harmony too much. I just want to be playing it. Um, I want it to already be there. And I almost don't, if it's not there, rather than try and like look up some chord voicing or whatever, I'm just going to kind of okay, what else have I got? You know, I'm just going to use whatever I have already internalized just so that I can kind of stay in that continuous flow of making decisions rather than interrupting it constantly because of technical setbacks or, um, you know, or just uh, a lack of uh, skill, basically, or a lack of, of chops. Um, and as I say, it's not, it's not like some far off goal you know, that someday I'll have enough chops that I'll be able to flow. It's like, it just seems like there's always a way to serve the vision, even with the most humble set of chops um, and technical skills. So anyway, that's kind of uh, the gist of what I wanted to sketch out in terms of my philosophical approach to composing. And I guess coming from a place of thinking, you know, what, how would I teach composition if I were to start teaching more formally a bit more? How might I structure future videos? Um, for me, this idea of, uh, yeah, having practice and having applied practice or noodling or um, sort of applied theory as these things that we, we do in a kind of conscious way, but then having composition as this more free-flowing activity 
uh, that can start right now, you know, that it's not about waiting until you have the right gear or the right technical chops. I think that's sort of where I wanted to put the emphasis. So composition through improvisation. A um, little bit of an abstract one, a little bit of a talky one. Let me know what you think. Um, obviously, there are lots of different ways to approach composing music. This is just the way that sort of has resonated for me uh, most through my life. And, you know, I've sort of ended up where I've ended up, uh, which is composing day to day, writing music for things and writing music just for myself sometimes as well. Um, and it's all about, you know, just doing it purely for the love of it. I think that's the last point, I guess, is just um, there's no reason for <laughs> art to exist in a way other than because, you know, you find it beautiful or you want to share something beautiful or something truthful or honest. So um, I think uh, as long as we stay true to that, then it's probably all good. So, yeah, thank you very much for your attention and uh, thanks for making it to the end of a rambly video. I'll uh, see you on the next one. Take care. Happy composing.